Chapter 12 Icy Plutonian Pluto Avalanche Flying very fast for over a billion miles so far, they safely arrived close to this ninth and final planet-slash-asteroid from the sun. Slowing down substantially, they cautiously headed towards our smallest planet-slash-asteroid. True to Hades's premonition, this approximate 100-mile-wide outermost moon, named Hydra, roared in front of them, nearly causing another collision. With only 13,000 more miles to reach their destination, they had to carefully dodge its remaining three moons. P4, Nix, and Karen. Realizing from past estimations that the planets have a slower orbital velocity the further they are away from its sun, she advised them to approach even slower. Finally arriving very safely, Hades decided to have them head towards the north section of this coldest planet. Revolving at only 10,500 miles per hour, this slowest orbiting planet had to be approached very carefully. Slowing down, they all touched ground and slid safely on this icy Hadean Plutonian surface, amusing everyone. I think we should explore this planet slash asteroid individually to find Hermes and Helios. Then meet back here periodically with updates. Hades strongly suggested. I do presume that shall be the most elaborate plan, Poseidon pronounced. I concur, Gia added. Sounds like a good idea, Zeus opined. Knowing what they had to do, these venturers set out. Flying solo each, they flew low, slow, and vigilantly. At only one one-fiftieth of the volume of Earth, these seekers thought it would be an easy job. In a short while, seeing Hades flying over, Helios barked profusely. Realizing what his dog was doing, Hermes quickly threw up ice in front of Hades to capture her attention. Seeing this, she approached them, yelling at her not to land because of their dire situation that he and Helios were in. She told them she'd go back and get everyone else to help out. So meeting back at their agreed time and location, Hades told them all about her find. Closely following this locator, they all then gathered around these helpless ones. My foot is stuck in this ice. Everyone stay away. The ice above me is chipping. It may start an avalanche. Hermes warned as it started breaking more and more, causing an avalanche. Crashing down, tons of ice slid in a massive landslide. Running for their lives, the others barely escaped a certain demise. Buried in some of this, their rescuers had to devise a plan. Seeing them still conscious, Hades came up with a brilliant idea. Hope! Helios and I are stuck in this ice! Hermes repeated. Don't worry, you two. Stay still. I have a plan. Hades disclosed. While carving out a cubic foot of ice, Hades asked everyone to soften it up into the shape of a concave lens. Using their bare hands, they molded the frozen water. Finishing it, they aimed this primitive magnifier between the sun and the ice that was holding them trapped. Softening it up slowly, these trapped ones freed themselves. So finally, with this whole group congregating together for the first time since the Halley's Comet collision, the rescue mission certainly seemed to have come to a conclusion. Now, after having a celebratory mini-reunion, these cheerful classmates knew they had to get back to serious business. Being at its aphelion, furthest distance from the sun, this planet was almost 4.6 billion miles away. Having a bad feeling that it was so far away, appearing so tiny. Hades feared that most likely there would be a solar eclipse when a planet's moon orbits in front of its sun. Even though all their batteries weren't too low, this still reigning boss suggested they hop into Karen to fully recharge them. Cruising over only 12,000 miles, they completed that duty on the sunny side of this 750-mile-wide satellite. 
So after that simple assignment, Zeus and Gia had a very important speech to orate. It is really good that we are all finally back together again after all these search and rescue missions. Zeus gloated with much gratitude. Yes, our mission is now complete. Gia officially confirmed. We would like to thank you all for participating in this project, but especially for your bravery by rescuing each other. Zeus appreciated with gratitude. Okay, we will now be heading over to the Red Planet for band practice. I chose that place randomly. Gia informed joyfully as her apprentices bursted out in cheer. Immediately packing up, then taking off, these happy artists were very excited. Still very proud of her, Zeus once again allowed Hades to guide them all to Mars. Performing their music, singing, and playing their instruments, they had hours of fun with this much-deserved entertainment. Unfortunately, coming to a closing, this social event concluded. Knowing that all good times come to an end, these musicians knew they had to carry on. Taking back their command, Zeus and Gia escorted these socialites back to the old headquarters at our North Pole. Because his UPS wasn't working, this brilliant astrophysicist had to look up to the stars to navigate his way back home. Known as celestial navigation, this stargazer started to observe the night sky. Looking straight up, Zeus used the Big Dipper as a landmark. Following the last two stars, pointers, from its pot, this intelligent cosmologist followed it up about 34 degrees with his eyes. Viewing this with amazement, Zeus felt that everybody will finally be brought back home safely. Almost forgetting, he had to readjust his scholar's governors to exceed light speed. So after a very long and dangerous adventure, they all packed up one last time, then finally left this very mysterious solar system and flew back home. <laughs>